The Little Country Bunny and the Golden Shoes. We hear of the Easter Bunny who comes each Easter day before sunrise to bring eggs for boys and girls. So we think there is only one, but this is not so. There are really five Easter Bunnies, and they must be the five kindest and swiftest and wisest bunnies in the whole wide world. Because between sunset on Easter Eve and dawn on Easter morning, they do more work than the most rabbits do in a whole year. When one of the Easter bunnies grows old and can no longer run fast, the old, wise, and kind grandfather bunny, who lives at the palace of Easter eggs, calls the bunnies together for the whole world to select the very best one to take the place. Often, a mother bunny runs to her child and says, Now, if you learn to be wise and kind and swift, Someday you may grow up to be one of the Easter bunnies. And all the babies try their very best so that they can grow up and go to work for the grandfather bunny at the palace of Easter eggs. One day, a little country girl bunny with brown skin and a little cotton tail said, Someday I shall grow up to be an Easter bunny. You wait and see. Then all of the big white bunnies who lived in fine houses and the jack bunnies with long legs who can run so fast laughed at little Cottontail and told her to go back to the country and eat a carrot. But she said, wait and see. The little, cotton, the little girl Cottontail grew up to be a young lady Cottontail. And by and by, she had a husband. And then one day, much to her surprise, there were 21 cottontail babies to take care of. Then the big white rabbits and the jacks with long legs laughed and laughed and said, what did we tell you? Only a country rabbit would go and have all those babies. Now take care of them and leave Easter eggs to great big men bunnies like us. And they went away liking themselves very much. Cotton's tail stopped thinking about hopping over the world with lovely eggs for little boys and girls, and she took care of her babies. And one day, when her children stopped being babies and were little boy and girl bunnies, she called to them to her and said, Now we are going to have some fun. Then two of them she gave little brooms to and showed them how to sweep out the cottage. And two she taught how to make beds. Two more went with her to the kitchen and in no time at all had found out how to cook a good dinner. And with these went the two little dishwashers and they made the glasses shine like crystal. Two had little wash tubs full of soap suds and they washed all the linen. Two did the sewing and the mending. Two had sweet voices, were taught to sing, and two more to dance, and these amused all the others while they worked, so they were gay and happy. Two others were soon digging in the garden. To two she gave paints and crayons, and they would make pretty pictures for the walls. And when Mother Cottontail had given out all of the tasks, she looked around, and there was only one little boy bunny left, and he was sad and lonely. Then Mother Cottontail said to him, You are the most polite of all my children, so I shall make you keeper of my chair. And whenever I come to dinner, you shall seat me politely at the table. Then one day the little rabbits were half grown. She heard great talk among the forest rabbits. And when she asked what it was about, they said, Haven't you heard? One of the five Easter bunnies has grown too slow and we are going to the palace of Easter eggs to see old grandfather pick out a new one to take its place.
So she called her little cottontails and they all set off to the palace to see the fun. But their mother was sad. She thought that now she was nothing but an old mother bunny and could only look on. And that big handsome white rabbits or long legged jacks would be chosen. When they came to the palace of Easter eggs, there were bunnies everywhere on the great lawn. And the ones that ho hoped to be Easter bunnies stood together. And all the others looked on at them and clapped their paws. Then one big front door opened and the wise, old and kind grandfather bunny came hopping slowly out. As he told the biggest and those with the longest legs to show what they could do, they jumped and ran and showed him their pretty white fur. And they were all very fast and very clever. But still he did not pick one. And he said to them, you are pretty and you are fast, but you have not shown me that you are either kind or wise. Then his kind old eyes looked everywhere and at last they rested on little cottontail mother where she stood with her children around her and he called to her to come right up to the palace steps. So she took her 21 children and went up and stood before him. And when he spoke, his voice was so kind that she was not frightened at all. And he said, what a large family you have, my dear. I suppose they take all of your time. But she said, when they were babies, that was so. But now that they are well trained, that they do most of the work for me. Ah, he said, smiling, you must be very wise to train so many children so well. But tell me, do they always look so happy? And do they always hold their ears up so prettily? Indeed they do, she answered. We never he have a tear or a cross word in our little country cottage. And if I do say so myself, they do carry their ears, ears better than most bunnies. Then he said, patting the nearest bunny on the, herd, on the head, you must be very kind indeed to have such a happy home. It is too bad that you have no time to run and grow swift, as I might then have made you my fifth Easter bunny. And at that, Mother Cottontail started to laugh, and then she whispered to the bunnies. And every bunny on the lawn looked to see what would happen, and the old grandfather leaned forward to watch. Suddenly, all 21 children raced away, and Cottontail dashed after them. And... In no time at all, she had them all back again in front of the palace. Then the old, kind, wise grandfather bunny said, I see that you are swift also. It is too bad that you cannot go to carry my eggs because you will have to stay home to take care of your children. Mother Cottontail nodded her head to the little ones and they all formed a line and bowed low to the grandfather. Then she stepped in front of them and said, they will take get better care of the house than I. Then she called them up two by two and as she put her hands on each pair, she said, these are my sweepers. They clean the cottage. These make the beds without a wrinkle. These cook my dinner. These wash the dishes. These tend to the garden. These wash and dry all the clothes. These do the mending, these sing and these dance to keep us merry while we work. These are learning to paint pretty pictures for the walls. And this littlest one of all always pulls my chair out for me when I sit at the table. So you see, I can leave them to take care of the house until I come home. Then the old, kind and wise grandfather said, you have proved yourself to not only be wise and kind and swift, but also very clever. Come to the palace tomorrow afternoon, for that is Easter Eve, and you shall be my fifth Easter Bunny. The next evening, Cottontail knocked on the big front door, 
and was admitted to the palace. There she stood in her funny country clothes, but none of the other four Easter bunnies laughed, for they were wise and kind and knew better. They showed her all over the palace, from room to room, all piled high with eggs of gold and silver. And the eggs glittered like snow. Chocolate eggs, marshmallow eggs, eggs for rich children and eggs for poor children for children who were sick and for children who were well all over the world. Then as soon as it was dark enough for the children to be asleep all over the world, the old, wise, kind grandfather gave the word and the five bunnies set to work as fast as they could. First one, then the other went to take a large egg or pretty little basket in a single hop and would be out of the palace and out of sight. Then in a moment he would be back again and before you could say Jack Robinson, he would have whisked away again. Slowly the night wore away and the bunnies began to look tired as they kept returning for more and more eggs. And then the palace, the glittering piles grew smaller and smaller. Poor little Cottontail was very tired, for this was the first time she'd ever gone so far or so fast in her life. She was beginning to hope that she could soon take the little basket that was set aside for her own children and go hopping home. When wise, old, kind grandfather called to her. When she went close, she saw that he was holding in his hand the loveliest egg she had ever seen. It was glittering like a diamond. Peek through and see what you shall see, he said. So she peeked. She peeked through the little hole in one end and saw a beautiful scene with a sleigh and a lake with people ice skating on it. And he said, because you have such a lovely heart for children, I'm going to give you the best but the hardest trip of all. Far off over two rivers and three mountains, there is a great mountain peak. And in a little cottage on that peak is a little boy who has been ill for a whole year and who has been so brave that never once has he cried or complained. The mountain is so high and there is ice on the top, but it will be a hard climb. But if you get there, you will have more happiness than any other Easter bunny. Cottontail picked up the egg very gently and went hopping away on her journey. She crossed the first river and then the second. She went over the first mountain and then another and yet another until at last she reached the highest mountain of all. She was very tired when at last she got to the bottom of the great peak and her heart failed her when she saw how high it was and how slippery with ice and snow on top. But holding the egg very carefully, she started hopping up. At last she reached the ice and snow and now she was almost to the top and she could see the little cottage all covered with snow where the little boy was sleeping. Then a terrible thing happened. Her foot, foot slipped and down she came Downward she fell into the snowdrifts and then left the ice and snow rolling and bouncing against the stones. She felt the air getting warmer. Down, down she went. She crashed through a thicket of budding laurel, rolled across the pasture and finally struck against the tree of a great apple tree. And that was just getting ready to bloom for Easter. And there she lay with the egg still safely clutched in her paw, but with a great pain in her leg. She tried to rise again because she saw a lovely pink light in the sky and knew that in a few minutes more it would be day and the little boy would be sad if she did not get his if he did not get his egg to him. But the pain was so bad she fell down and then she felt something touch her shoulder and she looked up and there right before her way off there in the distant land was old, wise, kind Grandfather Bunny. 
And he smiled at her and said, you are not only wise and kind and swift, but you are also the bravest of all the bunnies. And I shall make you my very own golden shoe, Easter bunny. And he reached over and she saw for the first time that he was holding a tiny pair of golden shoes in his hand. And he bent down and put them on her feet. Suddenly all the pain left her leg and she stood up and picked up the precious egg. Then before she knew what was happening, she felt a sudden motion and she found herself flying high in the air over the pasture she flew over the laurel, over the stones, until at last when she landed, she looked back and she saw that one single jump had carried her halfway up the mountain. And then she jumped once again. And there she was at the cottage door. Quickly, she squeezed into the tiny crack that had been left open just in case the bunny did come all that way. And in the hand of the beautiful sleeping boy, she placed the egg. Then just as the Easter morning sun rose over the edge of the world, she jumped quickly back to the palace where she found her little basket, her own little bunnies, and went hopping back home to give them a happy Easter. Mother Cottontail found that the garden was tended. And sure enough, just as she said, everything was in order. The floors were swept and there were two lovely pictures hanging on the wall. The dishes were washed and shown in the cupboard. The clothes were washed and mended and nicely hung away. And her 21 children were all sound asleep in their beds. And the little house of Mother Cottontail can always be told from now from the homes of all the other bunnies because in a special place on the wall, a very special hook hangs a pair of tiny little golden shoes.